We are here at Meta in Brooklyn, where the chef grew up in Argentina, cooking everything over fire. And now he's doing that in his own restaurant, cooking the whole menu over an open flame. That's how he does short ribs too. Everyone braises short ribs, uh, but we're here to find out if you can cook them a better way. Yeah. Negro. So good to see you. Welcome, guys. We're gonna learn how to cook short ribs. Short ribs is a cut then doesn't have too much use, or when you talk with somebody, it's just one option, braise the short ribs. Rib. Yeah. But in Argentina, it's our basically main cut of meat. When you're talking about salad with friends, first thing you do is just go buy pounds of short ribs. So we're going to be playing around with a different style of cooking of short ribs, all using open fire. Then we're going to be doing some uh, kind of Argentine style, more traditional uh, short ribs. And then we're going to use kind of meta style. We have some short ribs that have been uh, marinated with a special treatment. Uh... <laughs> that sounds ominous. Yeah. The American thought is that for the barbecue, ribeye is the best cut because it has the most fat from the loin. So you can grill it fast, eat it medium rare, and you get to still eat some of that fat. Short ribs, if you braise them, you never really get that grilled flavor. So this is a long grill. It's like very similar, but completely different. What's the process for building the fire? It definitely depends on what is uh, your schedule for the day and what proteins you need to cook. Mm -hmm. Definitely if you hang in a uh, big proteins, you're gonna need the fire earlier. You can see here now two ways to use the, the, the cooking. The fire, one is radiant heat from the cold. Uh, the short ribs, they need to be in radiant heat from the flames. This is a kind of classic setup. In South America, you go to any house and you will find one of these in the garden. Or some people will have like a whole room in the house and it's just for the barbecue, you know? Yeah. Let's cook. Let's cook. Cool. We kind of trying to flip the short rib as a kind of like a small dish. So I tried for first time on Friday this dish. We're gonna try it today again. If you guys like it, we're gonna put it in the menu. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> no pressure. So what have you done to these so far? This one we do like a quick dry age technique that we have over here. Uh, and in the back area we have coals of rum but a hole in the middle. So basically you should create like a convection of heat. It's never going to burn, it's just going to get crispy slowly. I think Americans are starting to get this now. It's like, yeah. don't just get it f***ing raging hot. In Argentina, basically, if you have any fire touching the meat, you are pretty bad cooking. So the whole thing is kind of just like, relax, man. Now we're going to go to one of the most popular way to eat uh, short ribs in Argentina. Mayonnaise and chimichurri are in every asado that you do. It's like a medium, well, Mm -hmm. Well done. Cut. So it's normally you're dipping the bread in the mayo. Bread, meat, bread, meat, just wine, wine, wine. Holy shit, Negro. This is incredible. It has a little bit of texture, but it's not chewy. So juicy because there's so much fat. I don't think I'm ever going to braise a short rib again. I think it's just what I do from now on. So these are ready. And you can hear it crunching. Yeah. That's great. Let's chop some of our uh, dandelion greens. Going to dump it with the dandelion greens. Here we have some scallions, some mint. I don't think somebody from Argentina will be happy about putting mint with short ribs, but who cares? They'll get over it. Actually, we're, we're, we're huge in Argentina. So here we have a dressing that is made with roasted garlic puree, a red wine vinegar that was leave with marshmallow stem. So um, a lot of this dressing is byproduct. I don't even know how to describe that. Sweet, obviously acidic, not fishy at all. When was the uh, last time you saw Back to the Future? A long time ago. There's the scene at the very beginning where he stands in front of the wall of amplifiers. Yeah. There's one guitar note and it blows him it blows into the wall. That's kind of what this is reminding me of. Before onions go bad, we just turn it into a powder. So this is the onion powder you made? Yes. That's it, guys. Here is Taylor with us, Chef de Cucina Mera, who has been working since the beginning. This is a crispy short rib salad we're looking to put in the menu. So please, guys, let's try it and see if we can put it in the menu or not. Right. <laughs> no pressure there at all. Yeah. No pressure at all. All right, I can go on the menu. Despite the amount of acid, garlic, chilies, it is really mellow. I have a quick question for you. Can something still be a salad when half of the salad is meat? Yeah, a, okay. meat, a meat salad. Uh huh. Meat salad. Our first run for the first year was short ribs grilled, traditionally asado style, Argentinian style. And now we're starting to work short ribs into, into other dishes and started like, all right, well, 
yeah, you can have a meat salad. We have the the same kind of conversation all the time in the butcher shop about like different steaks. Nothing is going to be exactly the same. If you want a Denver steak, it's going to need to be like medium. You don't want it rare. It's not going to be good rare. That is a good example because it's something that's been happening here with the short ribs. People ordering medium rare or rare short ribs, like you cannot. No, no don't you do that. Eat it. And that's something that people just take away. Like that different cuts require different different methods and different times of cooking. Right. And some cuts are better well yeah. done. Okay guys, we're gonna take down this short rib plate that's been hanging here. It's almost four hours. Should be medium. Medium well. You ready for it? You still see all the marbling inside? Yeah. And because it was cooked slow, just that fat is keeping inside. You get that nice, even heat. That fat's not gonna run her down as quickly. That's what patience gets you. Yeah. Best one yet. <laughs> well, all of that fat from the slow cooking, but completely dry. It's not masked with anything else. This is one of those like, hey America, we've been f***ing this this cut up for a couple hundred years. Yeah. You've got to, got to start doing it like this. Raising it, you kind of lose the integrity of the muscle and how it's structured. You kind of just break it down. The fat actually renders out rather than staying inside of the meat. Yeah. So it's a completely different way of thinking about it. And it's always nice to know that an example of how just taking your time, like don't worry about the, you don't want the fire touching it. Like what it's creating around it is what's important. Yeah. You could serve this on the menu. Good to know. You can do that. Ready now. You can do that. We're gonna be working in this uh, beef heart carpaccio. Whoa. That's it. So basically, you just wanna give a quick sear, smokiness. So why beef heart? We don't like to waste in Meta. And as example of short ribs, then it's a cut that no, nobody uses. So uh, for us, it's important to incorporate this kind of off cuts. Let's eat it. This is fantastic. Funky, spicy. This sauce is so good. Yeah. Love the iron, just the slightest bit, but it still tastes like a steak. We don't try to cover that flavor with it, just trying to pair it with all this spiciness, so get it to a level, then it's uh, kind of balanced, so it doesn't come to your mouth strict like yeah. that iron taste. This is amazing, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. This has been completely eye-opening. Thank you guys for coming to us. For more episodes like this, let's click here. It's good. Holy sh That's not what I was expecting. Most yeah. sweet and sour things, you're used to being like super sweet.